Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sven and I hope you're doing great. So, the order of operations in Resolve is a pretty complicated topic, but we'll go through each and every step so you can clearly understand what is happening to an image. And a lot of these things are often confused or mixed up, so it is quite important to understand exactly what's going on. Let's start broadly with the order of the several pages in Resolve. Of course, we have the media page at the start and the deliver page at the end. But in between, the order sometimes jumps a bit back and forth, even though broadly you could say it's going from left to right. So cut or edit, into fusion, into color, and then into the deliver page. But let's have a closer look. So we're starting with the source processing, then we have the fusion page, then there's the timeline processing, and then we have all the processing after the timeline. The source processing starts with the camera raw settings, then the lens correction, and then the beginning of the color management. And for color management, if you're new to this topic, I do have a couple of other videos talking in detail about what color management is, why you need it and what it can be useful for. But let's just assume that you already know a little bit about color management. This is the part where the color management starts. So we take our input color space from the camera or from the footage that we are provided with. And this is the point where we convert to our working color space. After that, we do have the input LUT and usually in a professional workflow, you do not use color management and input LUT at the same time. It's either one or the other. So those are the, the order of operations in this case doesn't really matter that much because usually you don't use both of them at the same time. So now if you're working with interlaced footage, this is the part now where the deinterlacing happens. So the, all the processing in the software is happening in a progressive timeline. And after that, we get the super scale, which is only available in the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, which is an AI upscaling algorithm for higher image quality. After that, we go into the fusion page and in fusion, it's really dependent on how you set up the compositing or the, uh, the node graph that you're working in. So we can basically skip this part at the, at the moment because uh, it really depends on what you're doing. But just know that after super scale, after the source processing, we get to the fusion page, then all of the fusion stuff is happening, and then we go to the timeline processing. And this is important because the timeline processing starts with all the sizing information. So you do have footage, for example, that is shot in 6K, but your timeline is only in 2K scope, or it's in 4K, or it's in HD, or whatever. So you do need to resize the image to the timeline. But you don't do that before you go to the Fusion page, because in Fusion you want to work with the maximum image quality, so you want to work with the source image. That's why Fusion is happening before the timeline processing, so you can work in your original 6K source resolution inside of Fusion. Because visual effects are commonly processed in a linear color space, it goes hand in hand with the color management journey starting before that. So if we are, for example, setting up our project to ACES or DaVinci Intermediate, now the Fusion page already knows, okay, this is my timeline color space. I can now convert from this timeline color space to linear, work in this perfect linear working color space, and then go back to the timeline color space that all the rest of the project is being processed in. So now when we go to the timeline processing, the first thing we are going to experience is the edit sizing and then the input sizing. For those two, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference which one happens first. Just know the sizing is the first thing when you reframe a shot when you move it or when you rotate it or zoom or whatever it happens before all the other stuff that you are going to apply for example the fusion effects and i know this sounds a little bit counterintuitive because we just exited fusion but this is actually something different so we have the fusion page which works on the source material on the original source resolution and this is actually how you should do most of the effects if you want to provide the best image quality. But then you have fusion effects. And let me just show you that thing in detail in the software. So let's just look at this clip, for example. If we look at the metadata of that file, it is shot in 4K DCI. So we have a resolution of 4096 by 2160 pixels. Our project, on the other hand, if I open up the settings, is set to full HD. So it's way smaller than that. If we open it by right click open in fusion page, we can see that we are working in this 4K resolution because that's the source resolution of the clip. And if we go back to the edit page, 
this is then the point where all the downscaling towards our HD timeline actually happens. But if we right click and say new fusion clip, so now it created a fusion clip called fusion clip 1 and it's in this full HD resolution because our timeline was set to full HD. So if we open this one in the fusion page, we can see that we are now working in the full HD resolution. This is why I strongly advise you to usually just open the clip inside of Fusion and not create a Fusion comp beforehand because now you are working in this lower resolution. But this is basically what the manual is, is meaning when it says Fusion effects. You can see that now the colors of those nodes, if you will, changed from orange to blue. And orange means it's a cut or edit page feature and blue means it's a color page feature. So you can see that it jumps back and forth between the edit page and the color page. So we have the pre-clip grade and we're talking about that in in a moment when we go to the color page. And for cut edit page, open fix and resolve fx, what they mean is when you apply a open fx inside the edit page or in the cut page directly on the clip on the timeline. So if you, for example, go to effects, open fx and Gaussian blur and we apply this one, this effect is now applied before we go into the color page. Now we go back to the color page and we have the clip grade and the post clip grade. And then we go back to the edit page for all the speed effects and all the compositing with all your individual video tracks. So speed effects are when you apply a retiming or a speed ramp or time remapping or however you want to call it inside the edit page. In retime and scaling, you have all the options for the retime process from nearest to optical flow to alter the appearance of the time ramp. So those are the speed effects and then there is also the compositing inside the edit or in the cut page when you have multiple video tracks and you set the composite type to something like add or any of those options or you play with the opacity. The way those video tracks are combined together is the compositing inside the edit page. And after that we have the timeline grade which finishes up everything inside the color page with our final timeline color grading. So after the timeline processing, we go to all the processing after the timeline. So we start with the subtitles, which is something that you set up in the edit page, but it's slapped on after all the color grading. That's why it's called processing after the timeline. It's sitting on top of all of that. Then we have the output sizing, because if our timeline is set to UHD, for example, and we only deliver to HD, this is the part where our timeline is being scaled down to our output resolution that we use for delivery. And then we are closing our color management with the output LUT or output color space or ODT. And as with the input LUT and input color space, the output LUT and output color space are usually not used in the same project or in the same workflow because they serve the same purpose and it's usually one or the other. And after we finish the color page, then we have the data burn in and the deliver page. So this is the broad order in which the images are processed inside DaVinci Resolve. If you like this type of content, please let me know in the comments below. Next week we are going to look at the processing inside the color page and we are going to look even deeper into the exact order of individual tools. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel and give this video a like. And until then, I'll see you in the next episode.